brought up the, the missed touchdown opportunity to trade the Iowa game, so it could completely change the game. Today you hit Ty in stride for that 60 yard bomb. Was that, you know, like a, a relieving moment, or was that just a, kind of a see, I can do it? <laughs> um, more so like a see, I could do it. But, uh, I mean, I hit Dante on the post in South Dakota State. I hit Trey on the sideline to tie the game up against Vandy. So, I mean, like, I know I could do it. It's just being more consistent. And, um, you know, I'm still trying to learn that. This is my sixth start this this game, like, ever. So, um, but uh, we work it every, every day in practice, after practice, during practice. We script shots and stuff like that. So, we've been working on it. And uh, we, we hit it today. On the field, did you feel the energy change from San Jose State after that? I mean, it kind of seemed like that was like the dagger play. Yeah, that, I ran off the field saying that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that I mean, plays like that, like explosive plays for touchdowns like that really, you know, take the air out of a team. And I think that w that's what happened today. Oh, no, that's a confidence builder right there for Ty. You know, one thing with the receivers, I feel like it's all confidence. You know, EJ Scott had a great game today. He had a bunch of catches today, too. So, like I said, it, we all we have talent in the receiver room. I think it's just more so confidence. You know, they don't have that much experience either. So, you know, they, they keep they keep uh, getting their experience up and their confidence up. And we, we, got, we have weapons. That that's how it's supposed to be, you know. We we all D one athletes. We're all we're all here for a reason. You know, you know I me. Mean? You know what I mean. So, um, I'm just I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 just I'm very proud of them and how they came out and uh, you know they they did what exactly what I thought they were gonna do. So I had I never had a doubt. No, I just checked. I just checked my phone and, and found out. I, I didn't know, but uh, you know, everything felt like it was hitting on all cylinders today. So that's uh, that's always good. And you know, like I said, a lot of people stepped up today, and, and I'm really proud of them. Proud of this team. Team came out and really played played their butt off. DJ, was it evolution for the defense to create more turnovers today than you have been? Yeah, I mean, it's been a big emphasis for us. Uh, I think we pride ourselves on being physical and stopping the run and all those great things and. Those, those are good, but in order to be an elite defense, you got to get the offense the ball back. And a lot of the times, um, you know, they, they capitalize on those opportunities. And to play a complete ball game, I mean, those are the kind of things we need to do. Do you guys set a goal? I mean, it's three weeks in a row that the defense has held the team less than 300 yards of total offense. Is that one of your, your stat goals for a game, or where does that sit? Man, I mean, I'm not even sure. I think uh, I think the goal is really just to pound, pound at everything that we can um, – all intel we have from the other team and just like go be physical. I mean, pride ourselves on physicality, uh, pride ourselves on preparation and practice. I mean, we go hard and I think it just pays off some game day. I don't think we really, you know, have maybe we do because um, we have a chart um, in the hallway where we chart things like that, but I'm not sure if it's like 300 or so. But I, I think that the way we practice is paying off. Defense has been plenty, but off. Yeah, coach been preaching um, the guys that we depend on to play good, you got to play good, and the guys that, you know, are developing, you know, we got to get those guys playing good. With those guys playing good and, you know, the ball is playing good or whatever you want to call them, the captains, the leaders, if we can get everybody firing, I mean, it's, it's unstoppable. So, um, got to keep building those guys' confidence. They're the future of, of CSU. You know, it's not even just about now. Like, we, we got to build those guys. Another 12, sorry, another 12 tackle game for you, DJ. Mm. Coming into this year, you wanted to be the leader of this defense. Yeah. Have you lived up to those expectations? And sure does. Uh, <laughs> I mean, day in, day out, I mean, that's what I'm working on. Uh, I'm not really, I didn't even know uh, that stat, but, you know, I'm keeping, I'm not keeping up with those kind of things. What I'm keeping up with is, you know, the influence I have on the guys, you know, how much do, can they count on me to do my job and how much can I count on them to do their job? It's all about love and trust. And, um, I mean, I'm always going to pride myself on being a leader because that's a, that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, what more can you ask for than a, a whole university, a whole, you know, defense, a whole team to look look to you for, you know, to step up and be that guy. And I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to keep battling 
I don't keep up with the stats, but that's that's great right there. You had you had twelve tackles, bro. You was going crazy. <laughs> Oh, it was electric today. Ram Walk was really, uh, re was a, there was a big difference today in, in Ram Walk. There was a lot more people out there today. But uh, like I said, I, I told I told you guys that we're building and we're we're trying to build this culture and and, and we that's a that's something that we need. You know, we're, we're excited to go out there and play in front of you guys, in front of all the fans, and and we really thank them for all, uh, coming out there. Fourth largest crowd, that's awesome. And we need to have the third largest crowd one next home game. <laughs> Um, just, just like Stoney, he's another weapon, you know. And, and when you have weapons in the kick game, it makes my job easier and makes his job easier as well. So they're, they're both great players. And congrats, Caden, on the record. Uh, I'm proud of him, and he's gonna keep working. We're gonna we we're shooting for the stars over here. I'm, I'm loving the special teams myself. I mean, I'm a, I'm big in on special teams. Being a, a, a captain and a leader of this team, we all we have an emphasis on special teams. So those guys performing like that, I mean, they helped the team out a lot. Um, I'm, I'm proud of Caden. I remember uh, I was like a freshman. I had an accountability team. He was on my team, and a lot of things happened, and he's battling to come back, and, like, I love it. I, I love that for him. I love his journey. Um, I hope he keeps going. I mean, we're putting the pressure on him in practice, and I think it's paying off. That guy's working hard. You, you guys sat there three weekends ago and told us to tell them, told the fans, hang in there. Yep. Well start. Knives come out, you find out who your friends are when, when things go like that. What what changed? What flipped the switch where it feels like for three weeks this has been more of what I think most people thought this team might look like, going from Toledo to a tough game with Iowa and then today? I'll take it. Uh, I feel like the biggest thing was we didn't have like one of those four game opener slates like non conference that was just you know, slaps. I mean, <laughs> we, we, didn't, we didn't play a whole bunch of teams that wasn't worth anything. We played teams that made us develop. And during that time, we were still developing. I mean, it's still a, the, the staff is fairly new. This is like the first full year. I mean, you got all this stuff going on. We still got young guys. We're still trying to build the culture as a team. So, I mean, over that time, even though we didn't like the, the end result of the, the record or whatever, the development is there. And I think I, I would. I wouldn't want it any other way. I mean, I would like to change the record, but the way that we've battled as a team, the way that we've attacked practice and looked at this season, the way that we um, attack and go on one and know every week, like, I I'm loving it. And I think the fans are, are going to start to realize that, you know, we were growing and we're going to continue to grow. I mean, it's not like we've arrived. We played a good game today, but we got to press on. What do you think it says about the overall culture of this team, of this program under the new staff that – Everyone clearly stayed bought in through that rough start, and now it's starting to pay off. I mean, it's all about love and trust. He preaches it. I mean, when your leader's a tough guy like Coach Adazio, and um, you got other leaders on the team who, who, I mean, the whole coaching staff is, they love us, you could tell. It's not like a, a one of those things where you don't like the coach and the coach don't like you. It's, it's a great culture around here, and um, I think the more we continue to build that culture and the more we trust each other, the better we'll be as a program. That's what it's all about. How hard is it? Sometimes to get that and it can be lost in years or something. Gotcha, bro. Um, one thing that Coach Adazi always preaches is steady in a boat. So, you know, you got to keep a calm, especially in my position, you have to be calm, cool, and collected no matter what go, what's going on. But, I mean, if I'm if I'm an extension of the coaching staff, that's that's what I'm trying to preach to the team as well. So, like, like I said, the, with the ups and downs, the season's going to have the season's gonna have ups and downs. But as long as we stay level-headed and know that – where our foundation is love and trust, and I feel like we we will be perfectly fine when, when momentum, if momentum does shift. What was the vibe in the locker room like going back after that game? How different was it than after those first few games? Yeah, it was different. Um, what was the vibe like going back to that game? I think the funny thing is with the losses, I mean, of course, everybody is sad. If you're a competitor, you're not happy about losing. But I think the, the vibe will still get around each other. You know, stick together and stuff like that. And I mean, obviously after a win, we're going to celebrate together because we prepared hard as a team. 
I mean, every phase uh, did their thing today, and I mean, that's a testament to we're putting an emphasis on every phase. We need everybody on this team. It doesn't matter if you're a backup, you're only a specialist. If your role is only special teams, we need everybody. And I think um, the guys are starting to realize that and people are playing their roles. Um, I, it's the best thing, the best feeling. Even going in that locker room and celebrate with those guys after the losses we took, after the wins we have, I mean, it's, there's no better thing in life right now. Do you think there's something carry over because it, it does go like this sometimes and that this is a league that could be, could be wide open? What's your question again? I don't know if I fall. Oh, um, like I said, we just just yeah, just keep keep doing what we're doing. Uh, like I said, we're still trying to build the culture and love and trust. Like we we keep saying that. I know it probably sounds redundant, but it's really what we're living by. Like on on our team, and um, we we've been preparing different. We've been practicing different. Like we didn't come out. What was it? Monday we didn't or. Monday, we didn't come out and we didn't live up to Coach Adazio's standard for practice. And then the, the next few days of practice were unreal. So, like I'm saying, we can respond to, like, our coach challenging us. No team challenging us is, is going to waver us. Or if that's the right word. I don't know if it's the right word. Is it the right word? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you.